Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 92. Hoping uh, you guys are all doing well, and everybody's staying home and staying safe and staying healthy. Um, Apparently, things are supposed to get worse. However, though it's supposed to get worse, a lot of us should be used to being home. Um, So I'm just praying that... uh, those who are home and those who are okay remain okay. Um, and some people are not following the rules. Okay, there's. A, we understand people have to go to stores. That's understandable. You gotta protect yourself. Angel, my wife goes to the store. Uh, the only reason I don't go in is because I'm I'm a horrible shot. Like I don't even know my way around the store. I'll be in there forever. So she goes in and she'll gear up and go in and get what she needs. And she's a she's um. A little less, uh, what you call it, um, uh, conscience of, you know, what she'll look like, you know, wearing all that stuff. Me, I'm just, uh, yeah, sometimes I'll just worry about what other people, I don't know, it's just weird. I I shouldn't even be like that. I just don't, I just don't go to the store, man. I don't even go to the store when, when we don't have this shit. I don't, I, you guys know, because I've been doing this podcast since before then, you know, and, um, so, uh. But um, anyway, uh, everything else is cool here, man. I mean, just doing the same old, um, doing my writing in the mornings, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are checking out my TikToks. I appreciate it. Uh, those are cool. They're cool. Um, they <clears throat> exercise another creative part of me that I love doing, and they don't, they're not so long. They're only 15 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, which is great um, because I can do what I love to do. Because I love filming. Anybody who knows me knows I always have cameras. I love filming stuff and uh, putting music. I like to do all that. I just, I enjoy it. So uh, doing the TikToks, they 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 uh, challenge me to do what I love within 15 seconds. And so you got to be extra creative in a very short period of time. So I, I kind of like it, you know, because if you gave me the, 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 the freedom to just like film, I'll be there for, for like, you know, days, maybe even weeks to film something. When I did uh, my short Dear Daddy, I think that took, took me like three days to do. And that was only like a five minute short, maybe longer, maybe 10 minutes. But, uh, <clears throat> um, but that took me some time. So, you know, so with this, it gives me a chance to kind of uh, exercise that other creative part that's always itching in me. I love writing. So writing really covers a good part of me. Um, and then I love filming. So that basically covers the other thing. The, the challenge that I have, though, is my morning. So my mornings, to me, are my most creative time. It's the time when um, I love to be by myself. I love to be the first one up, have my coffee ready, and my wheels are turning. Um, it's a very... Um, how do I say, sensitive time for me, the mornings. It's when I'm most emotional. It's when I most, I think about things. I think about people the most is early in the morning. In the evening, I don't. In the evening, is it seems to be when I worry the most. Um, and that's bad. And that's part of why I created the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. So that way, um, I can use another creative part of me um, to kind of release anything that might be on my mind. And you know what? It helps. It definitely works. And I didn't even know if it was going to work. And it, I assumed it was going to work. I said, well, we'll see. And I, I, I'm I, done. You know, by the time I'm done with this, I'm done talking for the night. Like, I have nothing else to say, you know? Um, I don't want to talk about business. I don't want to talk about problems. I don't want to watch the news. 
I don't want to do any of these things before I go to bed. I, th that's like nightmarish to me. I like to go to bed with either a creative problem, like let's say I'm working on a plot or whatever the case, um, or I'm working on a, a title for a story or whatever the case, I can go to sleep with those problems because those problems I enjoy. And a lot of times when I put those kind of problems, like let's say I have a plot of a story that I want to work in, I'm, I'm stuck somewhere. I can actually go to sleep um, with the idea and wake up and, and, and kind of have it fleshed out. It's weird. I know it's weird. Put it this way. When I wanted to do Freestyle, my book Freestyle, which was my second novel, I had the idea. Like, I wanted to do a vampire. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about the universe. And then I also, of course, wanted to tie it somehow, since Freestyle for Life had a freestyle theme to it. Not that the stories are basically about freestyle. They're really not. There's enough of them in enough freestyle in there for you to enjoy it, enough references and so on. But it's not really um, books about freestyle. Like you're not going to go in there and come back with this history lesson on the genre. No, it's just a backdrop. It's just like if it was a, you know, an urban movie and they played hip hop in the background. That's that's all it is. It's not about hip hop, but it has that that feel, that theme to it. You know, um, and that's why I try to do with freestyle. So when I came up with the idea for, for Freestyle, I didn't even have the name. I wanted to do something about a vampire. And I said, well, how can I do this? How can I turn this into something that might be enjoyable to my audience? And my audience, of course, is Freestyle Market. A lot of them are fans. A lot of you guys that listen to me now are fans of the genre. Not necessarily personnel. Even though there's a handful of artists... Um, and producers and people that I that I do know listen. Uh, a few of them let me know. A few I I, I know <laughs> that they listen, and that's cool. Uh, um, <clears throat> but the majority of you guys are fans of the genre, and I appreciate you so much. But um, so I will go to sleep with it with the idea. I say, okay, well, you know, how can I write something that my my audience? I don't want to say my fans because I don't think I'm worthy of fans yet but um i do have an audience that likes my uh, my work and uh so i put this into my head and it was so crazy because i remember when i woke up with the idea and it all just made so much sense it would just made so much sense uh hold on if you guys are not <clears throat> familiar with freestyle you need to get that book it's a great book it's available as Kindle and as, as a paperback. I only promote it the month of October. So, I mean, you might see me post about it here and there, but I don't go hard until the month of October. So I'm trying to make it like an annual tradition. So it's almost like when you know when, when Christmas is coming, when they all of a sudden they have all the, the Charlie Brown shows on. You know, you see the Christmas uh, commercials. So I try to do the same thing with Freestyle. Um, I just want it to be that kind of book. And that's the beauty of books. They're not like records. They don't get outdated like that. You know, you don't, you listen to a record, everybody loves it for six months and then it's dead. And then after that, it turns, it becomes corny. Then people are like, oh, you still listen to that shit? You know, uh, books are not like that. Books can transcend generations, generations upon generations. And that's the beauty of writing. You know, when I'm dead, 100, 100 years from now, uh, somebody could grab one of my books and read it like it's brand new. In fact, they'll read it and love the book, enjoy it, and then probably search to see if I'm still around or who wrote it, who am I, and then find out, oh, wow, this dude died 50 years ago, you know? So, um, and that's how legacies are done. That's how, you know, and that's what I want to do. That's what I, I'm trying. My goal, my goal is to leave a piece of me behind for eternity, forever. You know, it's not a money thing for me at all. It's about... Can I tell a story to make and make someone, you know, may move someone? I want, when I write, I want my stories to make you think. I want you to close the book and then kind of hold on to the book and just like stare at the ceiling and think about what you just read and, and make you feel either that 
you're in a much better position than so many other people or see someone who went through it and they pulled out of it, you know, maybe give you some hope or maybe it's hope and love, you know, someone who had no chance at all of ever falling in love or having a family and maybe you're a single person and, you know, all of a sudden you see that, no, it is possible, this can happen, you know. Uh, if, if my books can make you laugh, if my books can get you scared, if my books can make you just turn the pages where you don't want to close the book, if my books can make you cry, probably ultimately if they can make you cry, if there's a piece in there, there's a lot of sentimental pieces that, um, though in, for my characters, they'll be their mother or they'll be their grandmother. Um, for me, the emotions that I use to write them has, are the emotions I have for my own mother. So the, the little phrases that you'll see me use describing these people, you'll be able to feel what I'm writing because they're genuine. They, these are things that I truly felt for someone and still do. You know, my mom's not around, but the, those feelings have never, never disappeared. You know, they're still there. So, um, so if I can do that and if I can, if I can touch you and I can make you cry, not cry that you're sad, but you know, cry. Maybe I brought up some sort of memory then, you know, this, this, this is the kind of thing that, that I look for. This is, you know, people say, what, what do you want to get out of it? Oh, I want to sell a million copies. No, I mean, a million, two million would be great. 500 million will be wonderful. Um, but if it's only 100 people and 50 of them cried um, and they told me about it, <laughs> you know, uh, that's a big accomplishment for me. So uh, that's what I look for. But anyway, yeah, so with Freestyle, um, I wanted to come up with a plot. And the plot is, and I mentioned this before, is basically... Uh, it's my experience with Lil Susie, because I was I've been on the road with her for many many years, thirty over thirty years, and then she's forty one now. I've been just me and her on the road, just ourselves without her parents since she was seventeen years old. So we got a lot of time in together, and so that connection between the manager and Layla Storm, who is the vampire. That innocence, you'll see it in the story. You'll you'll understand it. Uh, I don't want I don't want to spoil it, but I think it's a, it's an incredible book, and I do uh, advise you, especially if you love to read, to, to get the book and then take your time with it. You know, um, but uh, you know, so you know, so those are the things that I I enjoy doing, and um, the mornings are s- such a hot time for me, such a creative time, and now it's a. A, a, a challenge, a tug of war between my writing and these TikToks. So, I've been uh, dehydrated, guys. I'm drinking a lot of water. So, excuse me. <clears throat> um, I think it's just the allergies. Uh, I went out before and I, I could feel it in my chest. I was like, oh no. Never had allergies in my life. Matter of fact, when I'm done with the podcast, I'm going to take an allergy pill uh, because it makes me go to sleep. So, um, uh, other than that, um, you know, seeing, we did have a, uh, um, we, we, there was a loss in the, our industry. Um, his name was Gary Salzman. So, I don't know if any of you guys know him now this is what's funny and this is funny within my business totally okay I work with people or have the ability to work with people for many years and never get to meet them in person like we've made money together we've won together we've lost together we've actually had arguments over the phone um we got to a point whether we like each other don't like each other it kind of showed uh, and one of those people was Gary Salzman. Gary, my dealings with Gary ha- was uh, due to uh, him managing Judy Torres. 
So, you know, as an agent, I deal with a lot of the artists. Every single artist, all the A-list artists, some of the B-list artists, I've been booking them for years. They all know me. I know them all. We've all worked together. And we've all made a ton of money in the past, all of them. Um, and you can name them. You name them. If they got to be A-list from, you know, the Susie, the Lizettes, the Stevies, the Lisas, the Exposés, the George Lamars, the Noels, the Johnny O's, the Cynthia's. The Karina is a sapphire. I mean, I could go down the line. There's, there's, I don't think there's an artist that I haven't worked with. I don't think there's one. But anyway, um, for many years, I worked directly with Judy. I was able to get up, you know, reach out to her direct. And that's nothing special because I don't always prefer that, just so you know. So I know these artists. I see them on the road anyway. Remember, I travel. So I don't need to contact them. There's nothing special about me contacting them directly for a show. Sometimes that's not a good idea because a lot of these artists do not keep track of their schedules. Or they, don't, at the very least, don't even have their schedules handy. Uh, so let's say, and sometimes I need an immediate answer. So let's say I, I call an artist and he or she is on the road or they're just not somewhere where they can look at their big calendar on the wall and uh, I call them and I'm like, okay, hey, listen, so I have something for, you know, April 17th. Can you do it? Da 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 da. Oh man, April, let me see. It sounds familiar, but I'm not going to know till I get to the office, back to my house or whatever. Okay, when will that be? I'll be there tomorrow afternoon. I'm like, oh, shoot. So now I have a choice. Um, I can wait, I can contact my buyer and say, hey, explain the situation um, or I could try to sell them to somebody else. Nine out of ten times I'm going to try to get them to wait. My goal is to always um, service the promoters with who they ask for first. Now if they give me the idea that, okay, well, is there somebody else? Because sometimes they just don't want to work. Then that's cool. Then I'll give them somebody else. Um, but if they seem disappointed because that's the artist that they really want, because I do get those. I get those that are just like gun ho on a particular artist. So I can't really sell them anybody else. They came to me with who they want, and that's who they want. And it's a turn off for me to try to sell them somebody else, whether it's one of my personal acts or somebody else. It's a turn off, you know? It's like, okay... You know, hey, I want I want some M&Ms. Yeah, but we don't have no more. But you should try this Snicker bars. You know, you're, yeah, I don't want Snickers. I'm in the mood for M&Ms. That, you know what I'm saying? It's like that. And that could be a real turnoff. I see a lot of people do that, and that sucks. People try to do that to me, too. Uh, it just doesn't work like that. Or you go in there for a pair of sneakers, and they try to sell you another pair. Or the, I'm a size 12. Or, well, you know, you think you'll fit 12 and a half? No, man. How about 11 and a half? No. You want to try it on? No. I know my feet. I've had these feet my whole life. <laughs> I need a 12, you know? Uh, and I get I get pissed. And I just want to go to another store. So, but anyway. So, uh, after a while, um, Judy ended up being managed by Gary. And he became my go-to guy for her, which was fine, you know? And then he had people that were under him that I used to, um, I used to, I forgot their names, that I used to have to go to. Uh, which was fine. I, 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 I like doing it. They're professional agents just like I am. Uh, so it was, um, so we knew how to do business. And I could call them, I'll get a yes or no within the minute, within the phone call, you know? Um, but anyway, he passed away. I, I didn't even know he was ill. And of course, the coronavirus, I mean, according to Judy's post. And we bumped heads one time. Like he had a hard time understanding my personality. I can be pretty free-spirited. Um, I try to be friends, especially people I'm working with. And I don't have a problem complimenting people. If there's something that I like about what they're doing or that I appreciate, it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be that I love what you did. Okay, you wrote the song, but maybe I love the work ethic behind it, what you tried to accomplish. And um, I gave him a compliment once like that, and he took it offensive, like I was patronizing him. That's basically the word I used. 
I'm like, I'm not patronizing you, man. I'm trying to be nice here. You know, I'm trying to create a relationship. And the dude just wasn't, wasn't it, you know. After that, we were cool. We spoke and we used to chit-chat. And he reached out to me a few times to help out with a couple of things. That he was doing some promotional blasts. And I did them for him for free. And um, But we never got to meet. And I kind of feel bad that we never got to meet. Um, another one that passed away was uh, Lisa Lisa's manager, uh, Stephanie Sirocco. And now this was... Uh, God, it's been a while now. I think it's been several months since she passed away, and I knew she was sick. She had been sick, she had cancer. So I know she she was sick, sick for years. And um, me and Stephanie had a really great relationship, um, like in the 90s. She's another one that we never met in person. But we used to get on the phone and talk for hours, and when she saw me you know, fighting, standing up against everybody and fighting for Angel and then fighting for the cover girls and then building SAL. She's always complimenting us. She, she would contact me and say, hey, man, you know, I love what you're doing. She goes, I have, I have your back. She goes, ain't nobody can say anything about you to me. And I appreciate that. And one time I remember I, we had a, I had a co-agent and the co-agent kind of uh, pulled a fast one on me. And I had Lisa doing a... Uh, a show it was a ski trip in the mountains in New York, and um, it just, there was a money situation. And what happened was, as uh, she had to just, I had cash, I had the cash, but they kind of played with the numbers to the point where they were going to give her less money. At the venue, that was her pickup money. She got her deposit, but she was gonna get less money. I forgot what the situation was for. Now, I was like, I was gonna take a hit and it was gonna be my commission, but I didn't care because what was important was me maintaining my relationship with Lisa. So I had that money, but this was before any of us were wired. There was no cash app or we didn't use PayPal like that at that time, nothing. Um, basically, checks, that was pretty much how we sent everything. Everything was a check. Or if you wanted to pay the $35, you're wired. But that was hardly ever. That's now, but that wasn't, we used to not work like that. I remember calling uh, calling Stephanie and Lisa and saying, hey, would you guys be okay with picking up less money? I got the rest here. They didn't give me no problem. No problem. And that's, you guys have no idea how rare that is. Like, I wouldn't do that, me, by myself. Like, the relationship I have with you has to be extremely tight. Extremely tight. I have to, like, that trust cannot even be... Uh, I didn't know I was at that level with them, but, yeah, apparently they, they trusted me. And sure enough, you know, I wasn't going to mess that up. So as soon as uh, she got back, a check was already in the mail. Matter of fact, I think I went to the bank and deposited it. I don't even remember what I did, but... She had passed away, so and that was a shock to me, and I, I felt really, really bad. And you know, you know, these people I worked with, and now this this virus is taking them away, and too close to home, man. Too close to home. So, but anyway, guys. Uh, again, hope hope uh, everyone's following the directions and staying safe and. You know, doing something at home, whether it's creative, maybe you want to pick up a hobby, maybe you want to work out, maybe you want to write a book, maybe you want to learn how to learn piano. Now with YouTube, you can learn anything. Go on YouTube. You want to learn how to play the piano? Uh, the only thing is you need a piano to learn, <laughs> you know. You could probably make some fake keys and just, you know, play it, you know, put, put some uh, a drawing out of a piano and just play the keys. Um you want to learn how to draw, you want to learn how to cook, uh, write, take pictures, whatever the case may be, you know, and now's a great time to do that, you know, so I'll take advantage, uh, don't let this time do you, do the time, you know, same thing like prison, <laughs> so, but listen guys, I'm done for tonight, I appreciate you listening, tuning in, like you do every night, um, until tomorrow, good night freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. 
For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.